Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop here. Today is September 27th, and what I'm going to be doing today with this radio is I'm going to replace four the four remaining old capacitors uh, in it and do an alignment and maybe finish it off today. But first off, how about a new light bulb? So this is the light bulb that came in this unit. It's a 120 volt light bulb and I happened to actually, I couldn't believe it, I actually have an identical light bulb. But unfortunately it's burned out so this is of no use. And of course I've got these other ones all with these little bases but you can't put something like that in there. It's a little too long. I have this one which is an ordinary filament bulb. And then I have this one which is actually an LED light. Which I'm kind of interested in trying this. All the rest are write-offs. Okay. I think I'm going to screw this one in. We'll just next time the radio comes on, we'll we'll see what it looks like. Okay, that's that for that. Another thing I'm going to be doing today is changing the uh, power cord to something that's a little less, a little less than this. This is a little ugly. So there we are. One, two, three, four capacitors to change. And then we'll play the radio and see what's up. Okay, I got four capacitors out. One, two, three, and four in soldered up and I have a new power cord I've put on good all is good okay so we got four capacitors to test and I have a new capacitor checker that I'd like to make use of here switch it on Okay, which I just posted a video on this unit getting it uh, into shape. So hopefully this is going to work well. First one is a 0.1. Great big capacitor. What I'm going to do here is a leakage test. So far this instrument has proven to be more sensitive than my quote regular guy. So. Uh, if the capacitor is leaky, the eye closes and stays closed. This is the voltage we're going to test it at. 3 volts starting here and then just working our way up, seeing how far we can go and keep the eye open. Okay, here we go. Well, not very far. Well, here we have 3 volts and you have a slight opening. up to 15 volts here. I mean this is nothing. So she's a leaky. I'm just going to turn this back. Give it a moment there. That was the charge in the capacitor coming out. That's what kept it open there for a moment. So for comparative sake I'll leave this at uh, what is this 15 volts and you can see what the eye is doing. We'll just compare the other capacitors. 15 volts. My other tester starts at 50 volts. It's not nearly as sensitive as this one. No. So this one did not close the eye. Hmm. Is that really? Some trouble making a connection here. But it's not nearly as leaky as the other one. 300 volts on it. Careful, Jim. discharge setting. So that one tested really good. Hmm. Okay, here's another one. Maybe this one will test good also. At least in terms of leakage. I didn't measure its capacitance. Okay.
three volts does that. Let me test this other one again because it's just unbelievable, isn't it? I didn't make a good connection to it. Leakage three volts. No. Same result. One leaking badly and one not right next to each other. Big drip, drip of wax there. Oh, we're already doing the test. Hmm. Nothing's going to pass. Now let's just put a brand new one in here. Just for comparison's sake. Let me grab one. because I'm still getting familiar with this machine. Three volts and it's open. 300, 400, 450. I think you get the picture. So much more sensitive than my other, my other capacitor checker I've been using for a couple of years now. I've gotten quite comfortable using it. This one's definitely more sensitive doesn't take as much of a leak to uh, close the eye. So there we are. You know what, i got to test these on my other tester now. This is my perfect opportunity to compare these two, and I better not, I better not uh, just not do it. I have a chance. Same thing, got an eye. But this one doesn't start at 3 volts, it starts at 50 volts. Fifty volts. Even if you can read twenty-five there, it's actually fifty that comes out of these terminals. Here we go, watching the eye. One fifty volts. So that's fifty volts, and you can see the eye coming open about halfway. Uh, I feel better about this test than the other one, probably just because of my familiarity. Now, this one tested good. I believe this is the one that tested good. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's find out. Fifty volts. No good. This one here I tested good. I don't think so. No good. Okay, so there's one more. This must be the last one here. This must be the one that tested. Yeah, short, very short lead here. Fifty volts. What do you do? stupid here that's good so I'm suspicious that this thing has a fault in it it has an open it's open 025.025 so we're going to measure the capacitance here point zero two five I think would be on this scale it's right at the end here I don't like that Lot. It's opening again right towards the end on a different scale. So if I were to read this one, this goes to 0 0.005. 0 0.005. So is this inner scale. There's a tiny amount of capacitance showing up here. 0 0.00001. Tiny amount of capacitance. So I think what we're looking at here is a, a capacitor with an open in it um, and that's why uh, it uh, 
it looks like it's not leaking. It, nothing's getting through it. I mean, so there we go. That's that's a bad actor then. Don't find too many like that. But I think that's really the only explanation. Great. Okay, so next we play the radio. Next we play the radio. And I still have the permanent uh, always on short in place. Okay, my friendly little radio. You should be feeling a little better now. Especially, uh, I think the one capacitor is really of significance. The other three, probably not going to make much difference. Radio was already working. Now, uh, so another uh, issue here is alignment. I've changed some components. Shouldn't really have affected the alignment, but who's to say? Volume down. Power on through the dim bulbs. Just watching for operation. Okay, tube's lighting up here. How come this, this light didn't come on? Up here. Oh, yeah. Nice try. Where's the other bulb? I've gone and put it away. Okay, I won't worry about the bulb. Let's hear this radio. Still is that swooshy sound? Six forty. Yeah, I wonder what that is. So if anything, the reception's actually gone downhill a little bit. So alignment is next. That's that's the next step along the way. I better find some. Uh, I better. Find, I'll see if I can find a schematic for this radio. Okay, so here's the uh, schematic for this radio, and uh, there's that interesting here. They call it a printed circuit. Printed circuit. Hmm. I would never call it that. But you can see how many parts are inside it. Look, oh my gosh, all kinds of stuff. So, so far, all of this appears to be working okay. But we're going to do a few more tests that may, may reveal some problems, but we'll see. So uh, I'm going to do some voltage tests on it. Let's just run through it really quick here. We'll start down here. There's your clock. Uh, outlet at the back. That's the lamp I'm trying to change. Uh, now, there should be, here's a capacitor to ground. 900 volt capacitor. And 330K resistor, I've checked that, it's there. That's how the chassis is tied in. The chassis is also tied in at the very front end of the radio. Okay. Now, this is showing in the, the 35W4, there's no, uh, not, nothing taken off the tap, of course, because the light is a 120 volt light bulb in this radio. There's our two filter capacitors. 2201 watt. We're going to read these two voltages and make sure they're there. 120 and 80. What's that? 6 volts. 6 volts must be referring to the grid bias here. 
set up by, by this arrangement. We'll check these things too. Make sure it's correct. And uh, that's what we're going to do. It's a very simple radio otherwise. Now, does it state the IF frequency? It's almost certainly 455, though. It doesn't state it anywhere. Let's look at some voltages here. Okay, so the set is on. I can tip it up safely. So this is plugged into an isolation transformer here. Uh, so this uh, wire coming from my meter is in fact tied back to the uh, power system, neutral and ground. There's the green wire that's doing it right here. It runs through my shop, ties all the equipment cabinets. So put this on here. Um, there should not be any kind of big explosion. <laughs> The last time I said that and did that, there was quite a pop. It was a very unusual, unusual thing. It was not. It was not. Uh, it, it was not a power system type fault. I think it was a discharging of capacitors or something. I don't know. Something weird. Anyway, scared me. As always, I should be scared. This is good to be on guard before doing that. Do I, do I have a light bulb handy right here? Burned out. Okay, we'll just use a voltmeter. Just going to check because I'm a chicken. There it is. And this may this may show uh, it, it may show uh, like 50, 60 volts, or it may show zero, or it may show the full ride. Let's see. It should should show 60 volts. If it does, we're okay. Uh, where's my leads here? means there's no direct connection between the two power wires coming in and the chassis. The only connection is through the capacitor and resistor combination there. All is normal. I should be able to put this right on. Could, could still cause a little bit of a sparky thing. but nothing serious. Okay, except for DC. Hey, the radio start working better. No. So we want to first check the uh, the B plus, uh, the highest B plus on the schematic. I just have up on my other screen here, I can see it. 120, 120. So that's on the 500 volt scale. Let's go there. 120. That's the 150 volt scale, and we're reading 130 there. And that would be only 40. That's a little low. And then this is the uh, it's supposed to be negative, isn't it? No. No, no, no. So it should be positive. About six volts, I think it said. Let's check. Fifteen volt scale. 
uh, it's three volts. Um, let's just make sure we're getting the radio full voltage. 123 line volts coming in. It's still a little low. It looks like two of them seem low. Okay, so we'll measure them at the tubes. The output tube is that guy there. Here. Here we want to see the high B plus. Let's see it right, right here. 15 volts cal. That's 40 volts. That's the low B plus. Hmm. There's the high one. Okay, I just picked the wrong. Yeah, see it's going out this wire going through a hole in the chassis up to the output transformer and the speaker. So this is the plate. So the plate is cooking with 140 big volts on it, so it's getting lots. Uh, but the other circuit is low at 40 volts. 50 volt scale. 45 volts instead of 80. So there's a resistor here, I believe it's this one up here, that is uh, between the two legs of the power supply. Let's see if I can prove that out. Got to be some reasonably high wattage resistor. It's got to be this one. Well, it would be high on one side. 150 volt scale. So there's the full show there, and on the other side, only 40. So I think this guy needs to be changed in order for us to get the right voltages on, and it's important, they're, they're way too low. Okay, so the next thing, we'll try to measure the resistance of this. Uh, I mean, it's in the midst of a circuit, so I'm not sure we can do it accurately. Here, let me just use this meter here. sure everything's discharged. See, it thinks it's a capacitor. So this test is failing. Working, I know, it, because I've actually, I guess, in the somehow I've connected it across the power supply capacitors. 32 picofarads. What the heck does that mean? So that didn't work. My little fancy meter just can't do it. Let's just use a regular ohm meter here. Just this guy. will clip them right on. numbers there. 12. It's supposed to be, isn't this 20, like around 2,000? 12. Over. 12. And 12 here too. 12. Yikes. That's gone way high. Let's nip it out of there and measure it again. And you're just going to pull that. So high wattage resistors take a beating. I had to look at the uh, bands. It looks like black, 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 or brown, brown, brown. Or this guy's just been so hot we can't read him anymore. Now, in the free and clear. What do you say, Mr. Same reading, 12,000 ohms. Whew. And what's it supposed to be? I'm looking at the schematic here. It is supposed to be 2200. Wow. Okay, so that's way out. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get a 2200 ohm, one watt resistor. Do I have such a thing? 2200. Yeah. That'll do it. Three red. Can I fit it? Sure. Very good. I better read this. I better read this resistor. <laughs> It looks like it's been somewhere else before I'm going in my little box there. I mentioned uh, in an earlier video I was waiting for a call from the police and then I didn't comment anymore. Just in case you were wondering, what's that all about? Our little black cat is upsetting one of our neighbors. Four or five doors down. Uh, to the point where I finally uh, called the police just to get guidance on, you know, what's our responsibility with our cat. I mean, it varies from municipality to municipality. Here in Aurelia, there are no bylaws concerning cats at all. So I don't know, what, what do you do? The neighbor's upset, he's making demands. So we phone the police to get guidance. And after listening to our story and seeing what kind of messages we've received from them and some of the things that have happened both last summer and this summer. I think my neighbor got a talking to from the police. Not a comfortable situation at all. We don't want to have conflicts with our neighbors. Now this is not an immediate neighbor. Our immediate neighbors are great. We have, we're, we're friends with all of our immediate neighbors, of course. Not with these people. So that's what that was. So as far as I know, they've got a talking to. Of course, I won't know. The police don't report to me, do they? So now uh, we've been keeping our black cat in during the afternoons to try to keep it from going and upsetting our neighbor. Oh boy, this just barely fits in here. Really tight. This may not work out with this resistor. But you know, what do you do? Uh, what else can you do? First time I've ever called the authorities for assistance with a civil matter. I've never really had a civil matter, <laughs> never had my neighbors upset. Yeah, what's my cat doing down there? It's, it's uh, attacking uh, chipmunks and birds on their property. And that's what's upsetting them. And then that's uh, pretty tight in there. When I mentioned to them, well, you have bird feeders on poles two feet off the ground, three of them throughout your backyard. That's a cat attraction. That's a cat hunting system are not interested in taking any steps to make their property less attractive. What can you do at that point? Call the police. Okay, so that's what that was. Life in the big city. Of course, Aurelia, where I live, is not a big city. It's a city of 30,000. 
expanding city of 30,000. Um, I have the feeling now that uh, work from home has be turned out to be a very practical and attractive option for many companies I've discovered and people. You can make it work. You don't need to live in the big city with all the traffic and all that. You can, you can live somewhere a little further away. Aurelia is an hour and a half from Toronto. It's just kind of too far to commute. But if you didn't have to commute except once a week, Aurelia might become a really nice place to live when you're actually working in a company located in Toronto. And I'm sure this is happening all over the place now. It's really jammed in there. You kind of want it to be out where it can cool off a little bit here. Ooh, it's probably pretty hot. Let's see if I can swing it out now. That's a little bit better. So the socket of the uh, of the tube is a heavens be. The socket of the tube is a, is a hot spot too. I mean, so we got a hot resistor attached to a hot socket. Any wonder why that other one wore out. Okay, we got it in there. That should raise the B plus uh, and I think the screen voltage to some of the earlier tubes in, in the radio. The output tube was fine. Let's check it out now. Maybe it's going to work better. That'd be interesting. Okay, dim bulbs. All good. Hitting that with the full voltage. Let's hear this puppy. Switching off my soldering iron there. That's a little better. Definitely better. Okay, now. Uh, we'll read the either side of the resistor it will give me the two B plus values. Um, I feel like the plate value and the screen value. So we're on a 150 volt scale. So that's 130. It's actually a little lower than it was on that side. And the other side is 80. 80. 80 dead on. Excellent. That's good. That's really good. Let, let me pull that off. Lay it down. Check it out. That's funny. Worked better up on its end. Really? Could be I'm just I'm actually lifting my uh, radio, lifting the radio up off the bench. It's a lot of stuff just under my bench, uh, power bars, all kinds of stuff just under the bench here.
Oh. Oh. What's happening there? Okay, a couple a couple funny things happened there. So first of all, I discovered that that uh, power supply, which is actually a power supply to a spare hard drive. This one here. This is my storage hard drive. I store all my videos on this guy. Periodically, once a month, I bring him in. And I just left it plugged in here. So how do you like that? That's sitting right under the bench here. And now it's gone. I don't normally have it there. Made a big difference. And then in the middle of that, the radio seemed to improve its operation suddenly, and I wasn't doing a thing. How did that happen? What did I do? Did that tube just die? What's this one? Come on, radio. Where'd you go? How did that disappear? Oh. What the heck's going on? Okay, I'm, I'm, I guess it was bad to contact there. Seems good now. Six forty. Six eighty. Six eighty. Okay, next step is alignment. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So I've got the signal generator hooked up. Just to feed its signal into the, uh, there's an antenna terminal input here. And uh, we're just gonna blast the IF from the antenna right into the uh, IF circuits. Are we really? Let's find out. So I think it's going to be 455. There it is, very, very broad. Four fifty on my uh, on my meter there. Okay, let's give it a little alignment activity. Let's see what happens here. I got to tip the radio up to, to do this. Just do the two top ones right now. Four fifty. In no particular order. This one looked good. Now we got to get underneath. It's a bit 
bit of a problem here. So this is reading the output on the speaker, by the way. In case you're not sure what I'm up to. seem to be I feel like I'm turning it into a limit it's binding up here oh that's where the peak is anyway let's put it right there and I'll do the top of that same can okay now the other one again okay so that's 455 now let's see what we've got going here to I believe is just oscillator adjustment and an antenna adjustment there. I'm going to just take a look at the uh, instructions before I get myself into some unnecessary trouble here. So here's our instructions. Now I've just completed the first two steps, but I didn't feed the signal into the uh, tubes like this. I just let it come in from the antenna. Now we're down here and you see uh, what they're suggesting is fashion a loop of several turns of wire. And radiate the signal into the loop of the receiver. So I have that set up. First thing we do, uh, we set the radio to 650, actually minimum capacity on the tuning capacitors all the way, one way. Then we adjust the oscillator, trimmer, 
to give us a signal of 650, 1650. We then come down here, for some reason, we repeat this, oh, this time we're doing the antenna trimmer. Okay, so oscillator first, 1650 closed capacitor. It did, it did say minimum, didn't it? Yeah, up at the top of the dial, of course. Open capacitor all the way. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Ah, that looks almost like seventeen, but we'll we'll go with what it says. I'm checking the capacitor. Make sure it is. Yep, capacitor is completely open. Sixteen fifty. Eh? Sixteen fifty. So the signal coming out of the signal generator now is reaching this, this coil. Lots of power. It's, it's way off. 610. And should say 16. Should say 6, 1610. It should say 1650. So we need to adjust the oscillator. Which one's the oscillator? This one here. Metal screwdriver. So we actually have two holes in the back here to come through. See it? Can't see. There's a wire right there. There. Okay. Screwdriver's in. We're ready now. This capacitor was tightened right down, as if somebody had tightened it. Uh, watch this. Just turn the radio a little bit. There's still a little more to go. And the ADC is active in this radio, so. You'll see the meter jump up from time to time, and then the ABC cranks it back down. Don't, don't move. So that's the oscillator set. Now the next step was at. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Got two two peaks there. How's that happen? Hmm. Oh, oh, you know what happened at the I just learn this myself just with my little self sometimes these capacitors as you reach the very end they actually work backwards they, they're getting less 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 capacitance and at the last moment there's a bit more why, why would I say that I would say that because it explains this so um, so let let's let me let me do this. I'll set this right on sixteen. That's I mean, it doesn't get any closer than that. That's fine. 
Okay, now the next, let me just look myself here. The next step is uh, done at 1460. Why, why 1460? You can't spot that on the dial exactly. Well, I'm going to do it at, I think they have a mark. They have a mark on the dial. They have a little, tiny, so that, there's the 14 mark. And then, can you see this in the camera? Right there's another little, little mark. Okay, okay, we'll go with that. Set it under this little mark. 1460. Let's see if it's 1460. Ooh, it's way off. How come you're way off? Let's just go down to 14 here. Maybe that little mark is a piece of dirt. 14. A little out. A little loud. There's no, that's the only oscillator adjustment is that one. Well, let's just keep going. We're right down to six. I'll put the dial right on seven. Of course, we don't know that this is in the right spot. We don't know the pointer is in the right spot on the string. Seven. close okay that's good enough we'll do the antenna now as it said we'll do it up at 14 how come I'm picking up signals from the signal generator it must have been a, an image going by okay so we're, we're dialed straight on 14 here okay so I'll max it Ooh, max it max it in here. Max it on here. Okay, now we'll adjust the antenna trigger. Screwdriver in. Watching this meter here. There we are. Okay, let's hear the radio now. Don't normally pick up anything up here. You might get something at 1010. There's that, there's that weird, weird thing again. You know what I think that is? I think this is the sound of the computer at the other end of my house. It went into standby mode on its own, the sleep mode. And I think this interference is coming from that computer all the way down here. And what it's doing is it's it's turning on the memory every every few, every second to maintain the memory or something like that. I'll investigate that in a minute. Okay, now if the radio is really hot, it'll, it'll pick something up. Look at that. I'm going to go, and it's going to take me a moment. I have to go down, kind of wake my computer up, and then shut it down. Let's see if this disappears. It's going to take a couple minutes.
So the computer is shutting down right now, but I think as soon as I wake it up, this pulsing stops. Uh, you heard it. I, I was down, in, down doing it. That noise signal coming out of that computer is strong enough to be heard out on the street. Uh, it's really powerful. And uh, hey, you think you're putting your computer to sleep, that should quiet it down. In my case, it puts out that huge signal. And what do we get? We're getting the French station here. This bodes really well for this radio. French station is a weak station. Many radios can get it, many cannot. So this one can. Pretty good. 740. Six eighty. Excellent. Six forty. Lovely. Five ninety. They're all there now. I'm saying beautiful and lovely, but they sound like crap. Well, they sound like crap because they're here in my shop. I take this radio somewhere else out of my shop, and it's working really well. It's really working well. It's working as good as you should expect for a radio that has this type of antenna on it. The last radio I was I, I finished was a music box radio, even simpler than this one, and all it used for an antenna was the length of wire, and that's really bad. So that radio, you can't expect even this kind of performance. So uh, that's great. Uh, if you have a radio with six tubes in it, and the first one is an RF tube, and you have another whole stage in the front of the radio, you get the next level up from this radio, which means it would probably pick up those signals, those stations, without much interference at all. Okay, so we're at the point now the radio is working, and it's all about uh, cosmetics, putting it together, and uh, back in its cabinet, and figuring out the light bulb situation. I'm really quite disappointed that this didn't work. How come you didn't work? Great. Okay.